What's going on everyone? Justin here with Trading Cards and More back with another box opening video. So tonight we're going to be opening some more 92-93 Tops Series 2 basketball. These are my last two boxes. Uh, we've done like seven boxes of these on the channel so far. We haven't pulled the Shaq Tops Gold Rookie. We haven't pulled the Alonzo Morning Tops Gold Rookie. You can see both, uh, both of them on the front. Those are the non-gold ones. But each pack you pretty much get a Tops Gold card. And you're looking for those cards. Those are going to be the big money. Um, also, there's one Jordan card in here. So we're going to be looking for that card as well. Uh, I've got quite a few of them. And quite a few are going to PSA or going to be going to PSA. So it's probably going to be the last of these. Um, I really want to hit that Shaq gold. I already have one in a PSA 9. It would be nice to get it in a 10. So that's kind of why... I bought a lot of these, was hoping to hoping to pull some, and, and even the regular Shaq rookie card goes for a pretty good amount of money. Um, what's going on, PSA 10 Hunter, and today is in here as well. I have another box where there's like one pack missing. Son of a gun. <laughs> yeah. Same. We had another box that had the same issue. It's factory sealed. Nothing wrong with the box. No, there's no weirdness going on. Just literally has a pack missing from it. Makes no sense whatsoever. Let me see here. Yep. Don't know. Don't know why. Don't know what the deal is, but missing pack. We got Kyle B in here. What's going on? Scott is in here. Yeah. I usually pull a couple shacks per box, but for some reason that gold one is just so elusive. And there's a lot of rookie cards in here. It's nice with the rookie cards. They got the gold stamp on them, so you can tell those apart. There's three rookie cards in a row. There's our gold. It's Mike Jeminski. We'll go through and, or I'll go through and separate all these later to pull out the Hall of Famers and the rookie cards and stuff. But right now we're just gonna get through it. Hopefully find some more rookie cards. But yeah, I don't know why that. Why we got so unlucky with that gold shack? It just makes no sense. Of all the packs we've opened, like, I think we would have got one by now, but it is what it is, I guess, right? All right, a couple rookies there. Lance Blanks, gold. Bernard King. Clyde Drexler, Drexler, Dumars. Lots of Hall of Famers in here, and uh, yeah, pretty good set. It's the first set the Tops did for basketball, so that makes it kind of, you know, iconic right there. And just with the Tops gold cards, obviously you buy one of those boxes of Tops gold cards sets or whatever. Those are pretty high up there on price now, like over $300 a box. And when I bought mine months ago, it was like 80 bucks, and I thought I almost overpaid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, SGC. I have never graded anything with SGC. They're getting more and more popular. For a while there, you could buy up SGC graded cards for really cheap. And, um, kind of missed that boat already. As there's more and more, like, businesses that are grading cards with them. And then they're selling them off, auctioning them off, whatever. So more and more people are familiarizing themselves with purchasing SGC graded cards, so therefore the prices on the on those cards are, are going up, and we've seen that in the last few months, really, because once upon a time you get them for really cheap because people didn't really value them as much, um, and I know they ch they changed their grading standards around, not their grading standards, but before they had a really weird grading scale, and the cases were really weird, like the like the labels on them and now they got like 9 9.5 which is mint plus and then they got a 10 and they also have like a 10 pristine so it's it's more along the lines of bgs or psa as far as like the, the look and you know the grades that you're getting and stuff like that so it's i guess more more recognizable um and like i said just in the last few months they've really really gone up in price and more people buying them and you know more auctions and they're run sending the cards off to them and getting them graded and which is which is good because PSA is like really really busy 
Um, there we go. We got the Jordan 50 point club. A little top to bottom on that one. But we got quite a few of these in the past. But our first Jordan card, our first hit of the box. But yeah, um, as far as I wouldn't want to grade with them just because I'd rather just have PSA graded cards. That's pretty much my whole collection's PSA stuff. I think PSA is always going to be the leader. Um, if you're just looking to grade the cards real quick and sell them off, it's definitely an option. So we got the Lonzo Morning rookie card. Take a look at it later. It looks a tad bit off center. Hard to get these perfect centered, but yeah, if you're just looking to like take a $20 card, you know, pay whatever they charge to grade, and then turn around and sell it for, you know, 100 bucks or whatever, then you can definitely make some money doing that, but I, I just always go with PSA. It's all I've been ever using. I don't really feel the need to use Beckett or uh, SGC. So, but I've not used them, so I can't really give you a, a fair evaluation of what I think. It's just more or less what the market's doing. But as far as my own personal collection, everything that I buy is, is PSA. It's all PSA graded. I, you know, I grade all my cards with PSA, so I have no reason to collect SGC cards or Beckett cards. I think PSA is always going to hold a premium. But they look cool. I mean, the cases are like black. So instead of having like a clear case around the card, it's got that black like around the card. So it looks cool, but I think that's kind of the appeal and why some people like them. But personally, I just go with, with PSA. Only, you know, the only downfall is right now, PSA is so slow on the turnaround times. But once you get shipments sent in every month, month after month after month, then you start seeing returns on a regular basis because depending on how many cards you sent off, which right now I'm like, I'm up there. I'm going to be over like 15, 1600 cards submitted here by the, by the next week. Um, got a Shaq rookie. Nice. Top to bottom, definitely off centered, but I usually grade, just grade them anyways. Cause the, you know, the tens, I mean, the tens were about 400 bucks. I think the nines were like, I don't even know a hundred. And then eights would probably be 40, 50 bucks. So I just grade them all pretty much, unless there's damage. Favorite card I've ever pulled? I, shoot, I don't know. Favorite card I've ever pulled? That's a hard question. I'd have to think about that. Chad's in the house. What's going on, Chad? Chad's having a yard sale here in the next couple days and I'm gonna be selling some of my junk at the yard sale. <laughs> I've got piles of stuff. I already got like a handful of boxes all boxed up. Stuff already priced out. Probably get some more stuff together tomorrow. Try to get an early start tomorrow and get, get some more stuff priced out. So then I gotta bring it over there. Whatnot. It's supposed to be like 90 degrees tomorrow, I think. It's just we got hit with a heat wave here in Wisconsin. Acapulco, what's going on? MDZZ, what's going on? So we got one Shaq, one Alonzo, and one Jordan so far. Charles Smith, gold. I like these because none of the cards are flipped around. Some boxes they are, and some, some boxes they're not. Uh, and if you're wondering, like I said, I'm pulling out all the rookies and Hall of Fames later on. Just saves time. Sam Mitchell. Bernard King. Basically, you're looking for the, the two big rookies and then Jordan. That's pretty much the main hits that we're looking for here. David Robinson. And then, obviously, whatever we get for gold cards. I don't think we got a single Hall of Famer gold card yet. Doesn't look like. There's a rookie. Yeah, we've not been doing very good with the gold card hits here. Do, 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 do. Other than that, once I get this area kind of cleared out a little bit, because I got a handful of boxes still to go through, but I got Pokemon bulk cards that I want to get rid of. And I need to get my sports cards, bulk cards listed up so I can get rid of those. 
That's gonna be my goal for July, and then try to organize this shelf over here. Just give you kind of a look, but I, I put this shelving unit in because it bumps right up against the wall right there, and it's all the way stacked up. And I got bulk Pokemon cards and all kinds of stuff there, just miscellaneous items. But finally, got to get through all that and kind of like organize it a little bit. Like I got different tins that I'm holding on to, Pokemon tins, just kind of maybe collect them. Stack them up against the wall somewhere. <laughs> Eventually, when I get a house, I'll have a nice little display of Pokemon stuff. I got Elite Trainer boxes, like the boxes that are empty. I got a whole tub full of uh, energy cards. I don't think those are worth pretty much anything. <laughs> Not sure what I'll do with those. And then I got code cards still that I need to list up and get rid of those. Find somebody to buy them, 10 cents a piece or something. Kima Lajuan, we got a Bob McCann, gold card. Clyde Drexler, Du Mars, Dominic Wilkins, Christian Leitner, and Sprewell. They're always back to back. Got a Mark Bryant, gold. Man, I've been sick if that was a Shaq. Or even the Alonzo, the centering looks real good on it. Chris Mullen, Isaiah Thomas, Moses Malone. Beam team of Mullins and Shaq. It's a nice one. Seems like we never hit the beam team with the gold stamp. I don't know if you can only get that out of the um, gold um, set or what, because I never get the gold stamp beam team cards. We got another Shaq and another one that's pretty good off center, top to bottom. It has like a yellow line. Like right in here, there's like a yellow. You can barely see it, but it's like a yellow line. A little misprint type thing. Pretty far on the off center now. Like I said, I think I would probably grade most of them, otherwise sell it raw for 20 bucks or whatever they're going for. Uh, draw all that time cards, what's going on. It's going good, it's going good. And Mark Jackson. Sometimes these gold foils too, they'll have like a line in them, like a little scratch scuff type thing going on. It's really weird. Do, 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 do. I also got the 92, 90, or sorry, 91 Skybox Series 2. I got four boxes left. I want to crack crack through those. Um, because there's those three card sets with Jordan, like the whole Dream Team's on it, and there's three cards that connect. The last like four or five boxes I did, the I think it's the middle card, or one of the cards. Every one of them on the back, there was like kind of a weird like spot on them that did, just didn't look like it was worth grading because of the spot. I don't recall if it was like a wear spot or kind of looked, I'd have to grab one out, but I just decided mo most of them I just ended up not being grade worthy, but the other two cards were. So I wanted to open the other box because they come from a different seller. So I wanted to have all three cards go out at the same time, grade them all together. That way I can get like a full set of them. Yeah, I don't know if the print run was bad or what. Ooh, that's upside down. That's weird. Malik Sealy, gold. Clyde Drexler, Clyde Drexler, Dumars. Get these cards in a row every time. LaSalle Thompson, so we know what the gold card's gonna be. It's gonna be upside down. So that's gonna be nice if we get the Shaq or the Alonzo. I got the Alonzo's at PSA right now, so hopefully I get a 10 back on that. We got Stacy King from the Bulls. Not too shabby. David Robinson, Corey Williams. Lee Mayberry, Lee Mayberry. Draft pick card. Reggie Miller. Another Jordan, nice. So this one's looking does it look better on the centering? Maybe a tad bit better than the other one. But it's tough to get these like really, really nicely centered. For some strange reason. Bottom borders on that one is a little bit smaller in the top. A little bit that way on the left to right. So two Shaqs, one Alonzo, and two Jordan so far. Usually it's about three, two to three of each card. It's typically like the average on this one. So 
I don't know what these boxes are going for now, but I paid pretty much between $130 and $150 per box, so I'm guessing the price might have softened a little bit, but I, I don't know. The price just was going up so much there for a while. I've gotten so many Shacks out of these, so many Alonzo Mornings, so many Jordans. My guess is I'm going to have quite a few PSA 10s, definitely a lot of 9s, and I'll be able to you know, sell them off and definitely make my money back and hopefully make a good profit. And now with the Jordan cards kind of like not as hot as they were with the, I mean the prices haven't like gone down kind of like significant or anything like that, but with the documentary kind of not, not being a big thing now. Uh, nice, Alonzo Morning, nicely centered. Alrighty. Very nice. And some of these on the, um, on the back, there'll be like, kind of like a weird chipping along the edge, but nothing wrong with these ones. Just the way they're, I don't know, the, the way they're printed or something. It's weird on some of them. Two of each, so doing pretty good. Let's see what our next gold card is here. Uh, Horace Grant. Horace Grant. I was going to say something weird going on there, but right beneath where the gold stamp is, you'll see like an imprint, but it's pretty common. Horace Grant. Scotty Pippen. I think I have more respect for Horace Grant now um, after seeing like what he did in the playoffs and everything in the, in the finals. And then, you know, when he went over to the Magic after uh, Jordan retired because he figured he, there was no reason to stay on the Bulls. And then you know they knocked him out of the the uh, they knocked him out from getting to the finals there in uh, '95. And yeah, Horace Grant had a game there where he sc scored a bunch of points. Did really good. Sean Kemp and the gold is I got all my all my tax stuff knocked out today because I have to pay federal taxes, state taxes. Um, Unemployment taxes, which the unemployment taxes for some reason went down. Um, I'm gonna have to call my uh, call my guy tomorrow and ask, see what they know why the unemployment tax went down. I, I'm guessing it has something to do with the whole epidemic that's going on that they lowered the taxes down or something. But I gotta call them tomorrow, get my 941 sent off. If you do your own taxes, you know what I'm talking about. Every quarter you got to send off a 941, which is basically like a recap of all the money you, you you made, all your employees made. For me, it's just I'm the only employee. But a third Shaq rookie card, nice, very nice. This one's left to right. At least it's not like way top to bottom off center like the other one was. This one's more like a nine centering. I mean, I think it would grade a nine just because of the centering. But it's not like so bad that it would get an eight, in my opinion. But you can definitely, you know, right off the bat, you can tell by looking at it. So, all right, three shacks. Oh. Moses Malone on the tops gold. All right, we need that freaking shack gold, man. Another shack. <laughs> what the heck is going on? Two shacks out of like three packs. What's going on? Dang, shack number four. This is crazy. And this card, I've been selling this raw on COMC. Check out my cards for like over 20 bucks. So even if they're not grade worthy, which like I said, even the eights will probably, you know, you'll make your money out of getting eights even. But the nines and tens are really where you're gonna make your money. But yeah, they're just easy money on the shacks. Ooh, Scotty Pippen gold. Oh, okay, that was a little, I was worried there. I seen, oh no, that corner got really raped. Oh man, look at that guys. I don't know what the heck happened there. It got completely bent up, completely creased on the corner. I did send one of these to PSA, and it was pretty gemmy looking. I was looking at the little dust down there, and then it does have a print defect where it's got, like, some discoloration there, but mainly that corner's just completely done for. That sucks. But not the end of the world. Like I said, I already sent one to PSA. It's probably a 9 or a 10. Del Curry... It just sucks. One good card in the pack, and then it's like the corner got just completely mauled somehow. But yeah, if that was a shack, I'd be really like, <laughs> I'd be really ticked right now because that's a thousand dollar card in a ten, and then 
I think the 9 is 300, 300 to 400, somewhere in there. I have the 9 already for the gold. Um, that one I pulled out, of, pulled out of the set. I just thought it would be cool to try to pull another one out of a pack, but it's just not happening. And we got th these packs and one more box, and that's it. Literally, I don't know what happened. And the seller who didn't send me the right boxes for two of them, so I got screwed out of two boxes. Hopefully, um, hopefully I find, or I, hopefully those two boxes weren't the boxes that would have had the, uh, the shack in it. There's Christian Leitner and Spreewell, back to back. Larry Johnson, very nice. Rookie of the year for 91. Jordan, nice, a nice Jordan. That's actually a lot nicer on the centering than normal. Corners are sharp and everything. Chad wants some cheese curds. I know those cheese curds were good. I almost ate the rest of those on the way home. And then uh, when I got home, there was only a handful left, and I ate the rest of them. Those things were freaking good. Cheese curds. Maybe we'll head over there tomorrow again after, <laughs> after we knock out the spark plugs. Isaiah Thomas. Scotty Pippen. Because I wanted to try their pizza, that pizza... You took a picture of the pizza the other day, and I was like, man, that looks really good, but minus the jalapenos, of course. But then that, then the worker said the pizza was really good, so got me craving. I haven't had pizza in probably like three months now. Good old pizza. Yeah, the Jordan looks good. I've got so many of those sent. I mean, I'm going to get at least one PSA, out, 10 out of those. I've just sent so many in. And then uh, I pulled like two of those in gold, and the one was like pretty, pretty bad, but the other one was pretty good. Hopefully, at least a nine. Sarunas, I don't even know who that is. One more gold, guys, and then we got one box left here. Thirty-six more shots of getting the shack. Lit uh, literal green, dang it. No luck. Man, was well, still a really good box. I'm, I'm not complaining. Uh, we got two Jordan base, or I should say 50-point club. Or, sorry, three Jordans. Man, we got, we killed it on this box. Three Jordans, two Alonzos, and four Shacks. So even at 20 bucks a piece, 20, 40, 60, 80, you know what I mean? But even if they get eights, nines, you know, 110 is like close to 400 bucks. Last time I checked anyways. All right, let's get into box number two. Oh yeah, the hand toss pizza. Yeah, that's that's what I would go for for sure. I I go in on a pizza with you. Um, just I just couldn't do the jalapenos. That would trigger my reflux big time. But pepperoni, olives, pepperoni, or that beef topping, whatever that looked pretty good. All right, this box is not missing a pack. Very good. I don't know why that happens. Something happens with the at the factory with them screwing up and. I've had a couple boxes now that just completely were missing a pack, which made no sense. And I've had to have the FLIR, but the FLIR boxes were kind of opened already. They weren't like factory sealed, so I don't know if somebody actually took a pack out or they just came that way. But last box, 36 more chances. But yeah, hand, hand tossed Italian like pizza, that style of like that type of pizza restaurant. With the Italian, you know, like the Italian style, with the hand tossed, it's like the best pizza. I'm alright on a thin, uh, thin crust every now and then, but and then the pan pizza. I mean, of course, working at Pizza Hut for those years, it, I just wasn't a fan of pan pizza. But I could do Chicago deep dish. That's pretty good. Yeah, sometimes there's more Alonzo mornings in there or shacks in a box. I don't know why. Oh, we got upside down cards, so it's gonna do that to us again. We got Isaiah Thomas, gold. Not a bad one. I'm sure we pulled that card before though. But yeah, getting four shacks was nice. Now this box is gonna be where half the cards are backwards. Petrovit, Hershey Hawkins. Oops, that's not even gold. Okay, let's go ahead and get them turned around. Robert Horry, Kevin Johnson. Clyde Drexler, Keem Olajuwon, oops, Michael Jordan, yes, let's go, man, we got a Jordan Topps Gold 50-point club, 
And the first one I pulled out of these boxes, it was like there was a bend in the whole card. Like a, you can hit it with the light and see the bend. But this one's looking really good. It's got nice centering. I can't tell if that's kind of something going on right there. A little black. Yeah, that might be a little very tiny black dot. Not Nothing big. Looking at the gold foil, see if there's any kind of lines, scratches. Now it's looking really, really good. Maybe a little off center on the back, which doesn't matter as much. But nice, pretty nice centering on the front, I would say. Sweet. So I'm not sure. I think this was only like 80 bucks, 100 bucks on PSA 10, something like that. Might be a little bit more, but yeah, nice card. Sweet. So that's the third, like the third one we've pulled out of all these boxes. And literally haven't pulled the Shack one though. That's that's crazy. Or the Alonzo Morning. Like we haven't pulled either one of them, which kind of doesn't make sense. Tom Hammonds. Wasn't expecting to pull that Michael Jordan again though. Oh, we got another Shack. Definitely left to right on that one. That corner looks a little soft. Yeah, that one might not even be graded just because of how soft that is. But, like I said, I send them off. Sell them off pretty quick. 20 people in here, alright. So if you guys missed it, we did a PSA submission a few hours ago, and all those cards are getting sent off. I already, I already listed them all on PSA, I already boxed them all up. It's going out tomorrow. It's uh, their economy service, which used to be pretty quick. It used to be like a one month, two week turnaround, I think. Two week or four week turnaround, something like that. Um, so it's usually twice or three times as fast as, you know, your bulk submissions, but I think they're, they're still calling that one a 100-day turnaround, I think. Um, but I put it on the outside of the box that it was economy, because that's what they call it. So hopefully it gets done quicker than, you know, the four, four to five month time frame, because those are some pretty high-end cards. I put a value on them over, I think it was between five and six grand somewhere in there, but like that, uh, the Charizard by itself is $3,500 if it gets a 10, I like the, the Jordan, or not the Jordan, the, um, oh, there's Leitner, and, oh, we didn't get the other one, that's weird, the, uh, rookies of LeBron James are, like, pretty high up, pretty, pretty high up there, I seen a PSA 8 on the gold, if you guys missed that, the Bowman Gold card that I have, I looked at another PSA 8, and mine looks like just as good, if not better, than that one. And that's going to be worth a pretty good amount of money if I can get that back in an 8. Uh, we got another Jordan, just non-gold, but nicely. Another little print kind of defect on that bottom border. It's like a little blue. I don't worry about that kind of stuff too much. They don't really get too finicky over that, but... All right, so two Jordans and a Shaq so far on this one. How you prepare your PSA? Uh, I, I show, like, the they're just card saver ones, or, you know, put it in a sleeve, put it in a card saver one. These are ultra pros because, obviously, card saver, card saver ones have been out of stock. They're coming back in stock here uh, within, the, within this week, so hopefully I can get on there and um, order a bunch. I'm going to actually call their customer service, see when those are going to for sure come back in stock. We got another Shaq rookie card. Nice. Nice, nice. Shaq is being good to us. This one's looking, yeah, pretty good on that centering. Another thing with this card, some of the cards have like a line right here on the border. It almost looks like a, like a mark, but it's, it's just like the print. When they printed them, they made like an error. Um, yeah, card saver ones and then just a regular sleeve. That's all you need and then Everything else you can go online and watch YouTube videos like how-to videos. They pretty much walk you through the whole thing. It's really easy uh, My buddy just he hopped he hopped on my video and seen what I was submitting he was like man nice submission And then he just listed 150 cards for the first time ever on uh, PSA and he's like yeah, it's really easy to do Randy Woods gold so he always did the um group submissions and he would have to pay up front all that money to do the group submission I'm like well you send them off to PSA yourself and then you don't pay for the actual grades and everything until you're being shipped back the cards which makes sense so then when they're charging you your credit card or whatever and you got a month to pay that off 
all you gotta do is sell some of the cards on eBay or locally or wherever, and you get easily get up enough funds to pay that credit card off or whatever. So you don't really have to worry about like having the funds up front. Um, Cause like for instance, my last PSA bulk submission came back. I had about twenty-five thousand dollars in cards in there, and uh, it costed me two. What was it? How many cards did I have? Three hundred. It's like twenty. It's less than three grand. And you know, you sell off what ten percent of the cards, and you've already got your money to pay the pay the fee. <laughs> so that's what you gotta kind of look at. And if you're submitting cards that aren't very valuable, then you need to rethink what what you're spending your money on. Uh, card savers haven't gone down in price, Chad. You pretty much have to buy them from the um, from the vendor. I'm I'm buying uh, a case, which you get like two thousand in a case, and that's hopefully going to last me until they come back like to normal prices. Uh, the company, when I spoke to him over the phone, he said probably October before they're back to normal prices but if you're just buying them off ebay or something you're always, you're gonna get gouged because people are just marking them up in price because because they're not in stock fully so obviously they're not going to sell them for like dirt cheap and then they just sell out in a day and then they missed out on all that money so it's really some supply and demand with all the stuff i mean one of the big guys i watch on youtube uh rudy with elf investments he did a, a whole video on uh just regular top loaders and he said this was the best investment or whatever of 2020 and it was just a top this is a big top loader obviously jumbo card but it was just top loaders and that's it and he had like a whole case and he was saying he paid like two cents a piece for the top loaders or whatever when he bought like a whole case of them and he said now they're selling for like you know like a thousand top loaders you can get like thirty dollars shipped <laughs> and he's like four dollars in or whatever bernard king on the tops gold so he was saying like that it's like 10 times his money on him. He doesn't normally sell them, but he's, you know, going to go ahead and sell them to go ahead and cash out on them, which is a smart thing to do, you know. Um, but I'm not buying them to turn around and resell them and double my money or anything like that because that's just, that's just wrong, especially when there's going to be so many people that want to get them, you know. Um, and lately I've been submitting 500 or more cards a month so I figure if I get one case of you know, 2,000 card savers, that's going to last me three to four months. So early July, August, September, October. So that's going to put me right around that time that you know card savers are going to get back back to normal to where they're you know you can buy them off eBay for 20 bucks or whatever for a 200 pack of them. Uh, that way I don't have to sit there and every month like worry about going online and calling these places up and doing all this stuff. It's just a big waste of time. So I'll just buy a case and uh, go that route, and then I'm I'm covered. But I, I think that's the only way you can buy them is you got to buy a case of 2,000. So and I'm more than happy to buy a full case because uh, I need them. James Edwards. I'm not sure on the price though. They haven't given out the price yet. I'm guessing it's gonna be between 180 and 200. So you're gonna pay just about the 20 dollars, you know, per box go to like those cards that don't stick together. I'm not sure what you mean, Scott. Whoa. All right. Gold card is, ah, oh, dang it. But yeah, as far as like top floaters and all the kind of sleeves, everything, I'm just kind of, you know, biding my time at this point. I'm not trying to spend a bunch of ridiculous amounts of money. I think I still got over there's Leitner and Sprewell. I think I still have over a thousand sleeves. If you guys can't tell, I have I've kind of toned it down on the on the box openings. Um, I don't I don't think there's anything really that I, I'm really excited about opening. So I'm just kind of saving my money and using it to buy cards that are I want to buy and grade them and make money that way. But if you know if I get get a good auction or something and I win a box of Prism or something like that out or Optic or any of those kind of boxes uh, I'll definitely try to snag I'll probably hop on tonight and see if I can snag snag some auctions or something so we have something to open on the channel 
but lately I just haven't bought anything. The prices are so high and all this old stuff. We've now done pretty much all the old stuff. I mean, there's a few boxes we haven't done, but they get to be so expensive and certain cards stick together. And uh, I did series one on this product. Yes, there's three different Jordan cards. Um, I think, did we get one of them in a top school? I think we did. And then, of course, you got Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, stuff like that. Um, but I'm not planning on doing any more Series 1. They are cheaper than Series 2, but I just prefer, from this point on, I'm probably not going to be buying any more of these. Opened enough of it to get my fix. Tate George. Paul Pressy, okay. I need to get through my garage tomorrow and pull some more stuff out to sell. And it's gonna be hot tomorrow, so that's not gonna be any fun. So get the rest of my stuff priced out and get the car loaded up. Do a drop off at the post office. And uh I think I got some car parts. Actually, I know I got some car parts from my old car in my garage. Probably post those up at, on Marketplace or whatever and probably make some money off of those too. I need to do that. It's just kind of all stored back in the corner and I parked my, my car in there so I never have enough room to get back there to kind of pull stuff out. I need to get that done. Try to make some more money this month. Leitner, I would hold on to for long term. Um, he's so far, like, retired that any kind of value that he would have, he would probably already have. So, I wouldn't really, really the players that you're speculating on are play, players that are currently playing. There's Petrovic, gold card. Somebody that's already retired and already kind of seen all their value go up and down and all that. I wouldn't really look at that as kind of an investment at this point. I mean, it's possible the prices could move up a little bit, but I, I don't think they're going to, like, all of a sudden overnight become valuable. Yeah, he was a good college player. Yeah, he went to the, the Dream Team or whatever. And, you know, he was one of the, one of the what, top three or four draft picks. But I just don't see all that much value. What, I, what I'm doing with those cards, I'm just lotting all the ones I have. Probably got 40 or 50, um rookie cards of his that I've opened from the different sets and I'm just gonna sell them off for whatever you know even if I get a buck a card I'd be happy Steve Bardo I just I got too many cards I just need to clear them out I need to do a video on that like the amount of time you spend monkeying around with these different cards that are just really low dollar cards it's really a lot of time and effort and energy it's almost not even worth it that's why I don't even list like cards like this you know if I wasn't gonna grade it I just send it off to ComC because by the time you take pictures and list it up on eBay and spend all that time do all the you know all the images and packing up shipping and all that stuff you're spending so much time on the low dollar stuff that you're taking away from time that you could be actually making money that's just my opinion. I mean, of course, I have, I might have higher um, expectations than some people as far as my eBay store goes. I think this year I've averaged about twenty thousand a month. You know, and some people they do five grand a month and they think that's a lot of money. But I'm trying to do this full time, so I've gotta maximize my time, time management. It's just my thing, but that's why I focus on the graded stuff because, you know, if you can sell a graded card for on average $100, you sell a couple hundred cards a month, you're already doing 20 grand a month. And it's not hard to do. It's like, you know, cards like this, Shaq Rookie, you know, it's, what, 20 bucks raw, get it in a PSA 9, you already got $100. Now, if you get a 10, forget about it. It's like, what, three, dollars $400 now? So that's really where you're going to make all your money. Judd Bushler. Very nice. Uh, Spreewell and Christian Leitner. Once I get this area cleaned up too, I might, I got a big whiteboard and I might kind of go over, do some more videos that are more 
going over statistics and trying to explain to people kind of my madness of how I do things. So if anybody would be interested in seeing something like that, let me know. I don't think there's really like as many people that really talk about that kind of stuff. I just think it'd be a cool, fun video to kind of explain kind of the different dynamics of investing and buying cards and selling and just the whole process. It's not for everyone. It definitely isn't for everyone. It's hard to hard to teach somebody how to do something like this, and it's hard to you know it's everybody kind of runs their business the way they want to run it there's a stockton gold card so it's really hard to kind of explain to somebody how it works and most people that don't really aren't good with numbers and complex type stuff they just would not be very good at buying and selling cards or whatever there's a byron houston draft pick gold a king the dream patrick ewing my stack here is getting like ridiculous. I gotta start another bulk stack over here before these tower and fall over. Handful of packs left, guys. I appreciate you coming. Looks like about a 40 minute live stream so far. The the Leitner rookie card's like 50 cents or a dollar maybe. It's not it's not worth much of anything. I mean, even that Alonzo Morning for a while there is like pretty much buy them in bulk for like a dollar. And he's a Hall of Famer, so. Only until, you know, recently they went up and the PSA 10, I don't even think they were worth grading PSA. And then now they're like 70 bucks or something for a PSA 10 Alonzo. So just lately with all the movement and the cards, these cards actually, you know, became worth it to kind of buy them and grade them. But really it's just the Shaq, the Jordan, and the Alonzo Morning. Yeah, not necessarily an instructional video, but... Like, I got one video idea where I kind of discuss, like, holding on to cards or selling them and then using that money to, like, reinvest into something else. Because a lot of people always talk about holding on to cards and, like, waiting like, wait until they go up in value and stuff like that. Like, there's cards you want to hold on to and kind of, like, get, you know, long-term gains of just every year you're gaining, like, the card value is going up a certain amount every year. So you kind of got a nice, solid investment. And then there's stuff that you can... You know, you can speculate on or think that it's going to go up in price, but you can just sell it off at whatever the market's at and then take that money and re-put it into something else and flip the money. For some reason, these surfaces look really weird with the blotchiness on them. I don't know what's going on. Lonzo Morning, all right. No blotchiness on that one. A little left to right on that one. A little tough to bottom. Very unfortunate. It's just really tough to get nice good solid centered cards out of here uh the next player with huge gains i don't even know chris smith some of the big guys right now um oh as far as prices on the gains i don't know <laughs> your guess is as good as mine um i always look at what who everybody's talking about and like who people are buying into now like i've been buying uh tyler harrow because he's one of the rookies this year that People think he's really good, and if he really breaks out and people start really looking at him for investing, that's you know that's really when the prices start to go up. Kind of goes from this like low hanging fruit, like you know, rookie base rookie cards for like three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, and then they start to you know just go up and go up and go up because they people buying them up and then they sell them, so then they sell them for more money than they bought them for, and it's just the price just keeps going up. As you know, they're more in demand and more people are buying them. So there's tons of names out there. I mean, I can't, I can only just guess just as good as the next, next person can guess. But I try to jump on the trends and see, like, listen to all the other different YouTube channels out there that are talking about players that they think are good. You know, prices are good, prices are cheap. And I've been really lucky. I mean, I bought Jason Tatum when he, when he started going up. And all those cards are like way more than I paid for them. I was buying, you know, John Morant's and Zion's because of all the hype. Those pretty much stayed the same or went up a little bit. But once I get them back from PSA, I'm going to make a ton of those. And then uh, just some of the other different ones. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, Trey Young. I bought tons of Trey Young's and his all went up. So there's just those different players that, you know, 
you know they're good people are talking about them and it literally takes a matter of months before like even though the prices are going up as you're looking at them like you look like two three four months down the road and you'll see the prices are even more because like people are late to like you know get out there and get them and if you get like the earlier you are the more you know the more money you're gonna make uh yeah i'd say david robinson over lawns of morning for sure um would you grade the morning card um i'm gonna be grading a handful of these ones um i don't it's kind of a little bit too far off for me to grade because i already know that's going to be a nine so john barry gold we got one more tops gold card and uh then we're done with the video so kind of disappointed we got another alonzo morning not a gold uh this one's a little better on the centering top to bottom maybe it's just when you look at it and you're like right off the get go you can just like stands out as being really off centered it's just unlike the shack it's like four hundred dollar card and a ten so it's like if you get a nine you're still gonna get a good amount of money whereas alonzo is like maybe 70 bucks on a ten so a nine i i can't imagine getting more than like 20 25 bucks for it so it's like is that really worth it when you know the best case scenario is a nine i just don't see it being worth it we got another Shaq beam team. We didn't pull a Jordan beam, uh, beam team out of here. And what's our last gold card gonna be? Or did we already get it? Did I miss it or did we already get it? I think it was, was it John Barry? Did we miss it? I don't know. I was talking and I stopped paying attention. Or, or we might have had a pack there with only one gold. Or, you know, one pack with no gold in it, which has, has, has happened before. So that, that's kind of my grading, um, I guess my grading uh, advice there, or, you know, what I follow, like that one. They're both about the same centering, so. And then with the Jordan, once again, I mean, the 10s are only selling for like 60 bucks or something. So unless I think I'm going to have a good shot at a 10, probably not even going to grade it. Uh, I think the Shacks looked pretty good. That one had a soft corner, though. And the gold one was definitely definitely going to the graders. So we got three three Jordans, two Alonzos, and two Shacks out of the last box. So that's pretty good. Probably go through these tomorrow and just see which ones I want to grade. Um, very nice. Another weird thing about this is the print too. Um, if you notice from the left to the right, the name looks really really nice. And then on that one, it looks kind of a little bit like blurred out, kind of like it's not as sharp. And you even look at Shaq himself; you can you can tell he's just a little bit more. It might be hard to tell on camera, but like the coloring, they missed one of the they missed one of the color like the layers of color or something, and it just comes out looking like kind of blurred. Some of these are, and some of them are really sharp. I don't think that really is going to affect them at all, but. Just something to point out. Don't know if the Alonzo's a little different. Jordan's looking good. Um, all right, yeah, other than that, if you guys have any uh, questions, let me know in the comments. We might do something tomorrow, I don't know. I got, like I said, that score stuff. Might do a, like a box opening of that, or a handful of boxes tomorrow night. So I just want to get stuff, because my next PSA submission the next PSA submission is going to be a bulk submission, and I have right around 400 cards I want to send in. And then the rest are all going to go for, like, the end of the next month or whatever, because I want to, like, keep sending in, you know, around 400 bulk cards a month um, at least. So we got that nice big amount of cards. I got a bunch of uh, Jordans from... All the Jordans from the Olympics, which I say... I'm probably not going to send them in... At the beginning of this month, I'm just going to wait till the end of the month. But I got multiple sets of those. I still got Jordans from the McDonald's packs. I still got Mornings and Shacks from the McDonald's packs. I'm just going to try to spread them out. I'm trying not to send them all to PSA at once. And then I got like 10, 15 copies of the same card. Because it takes you a while to sell each one. And then once you sell one, then you list the next one and so on. So I'm just kind of like holding off on those for now. But yeah, um, other than that, let me know what you thought. The, the bulk submission, uh, we're probably going to be sending that off like Thursday, I would say, Thursday night. And then I'll ship it out Friday, get it out the door. Um, that's what, the first or the second, whatever it is. And then uh, 
we got some ultra modern cards, all the new stuff that we're working on a shipment. I'm like within 20 cards of having 100 cards to send in. So I'm excited about that. That's definitely going to be going in as soon as I get 100 cards or more. Probably, probably next week, early next week or whatever. So we're just rolling out the PSA submissions. It's going to be crazy come October, November, whenever we start getting these submissions back. It's just going to be crazy. Um, but have I ever pulled the, the Shaq Gold? I've never never pulled it out of a pack, but I did buy the complete set. The Topps Gold complete set. I bought it like end of the last year, I think. Beginning of this year. I paid like 80 bucks for the set. And I and it pulled a PSA 9, so I definitely made money on that. Um, other than that, any comments or anything, just let me know in the comment section. Hopefully you guys have a good night. See you back here tomorrow. Have a good one. Take care.